Well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the MWR Financial Edge University live webinar. Hey, listen, this is going to be where you need to be to get this information that we're going to be delivering tonight. I want to thank you so much for those that have attended early. At any point in time, please drop your name, city, and state in the chat so you can be recognized here live. Again, our address, financialedgelive.com, financialedgelive.com. My name is Daryl R. Banks, Executive Director and Founding Member of MWR Financial and your host of the weekly Financial Edge University webinars. We do this for you each and every week to give you the information that you need to succeed to get you on the other side of money. And I tell you what, it's one thing that we are actually out here exposing people to this financial education, but we definitely want to be educated and you're going to get that here tonight. Our discussion topic, the PRA. What is that? The Private Reserve Account. You're going to want to know about this information. So at this point in time, make those last-minute calls. Get those last-minute texts out. You want your members in on this information tonight. You want your team in on this information tonight. It doesn't matter if you're a W-2 employee. It does not matter if you are uh, uh, have your own business. A private reserve account is accessible and available to you through this exclusive invitation-only membership. So, again, if this uh, is your call, if you're calling in by your phone, then your phone will then become the sound. So you will want to log in, again, at financialedgelive.com. Select your audio preference and then listen to the expert as is being explained to you on the screen. If you are uh, having to dial in, just take a listen and take notes. If you should encounter any technical difficulty with viewing the slides, just simply just refresh your screen for more presentation. All guests, please get back to the person who have invited you to this information tonight. Grab yourself a pen and a pad so you can take copious notes on what you're going to hear. Now, we have five minutes to the, uh, the, uh, the beginning of this presentation, 8.30 we get started. Have you registered for the event of 2022? That's right. This is the 2022 MWR Financial Year of Transformation event, April 23rd and 24th. The link for the Eventbrite tickets are in the chat. Please get yourself registered. You're not going to want to miss this information. We got George Diaz out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Welcome. Anthony Day, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Welcome. Benita Jenkins, Gary, Indiana. Welcome. Randy Critchison out of Greenlee, Colorado. Welcome. We got Gerald McCone uh, out of uh, Oklahoma. Welcome. Again, drop your name, city and state, anytime in the chat to be recognized here live on this platform. We want to thank you so much. I tell you what, we are excited to be excited about what's going to be delivered, not only today, but what's to come. NWR Financial is changing the trajectory across this nation, folks, with this information. One person, one family at a time. You want to be in the place with understanding what we're doing. We will be the Amazon of the financial services space. There's no question about that. Robert, Ronald Wrench out of Alabama, welcome. As you are chiming in, just simply just please mute your line for the background noise so we can have a clean webinar moving forward. We want to thank you so much for those that have chimed in early. Again, this is your weekly Thursday night Financial Edge University live webinar. We want to thank you so much. If you are a guest, please get back to the person who have invited you to this information tonight so that way you can get a better understanding of what we're doing less than a minute away. Again, drop your name, city, and state. we got Miss Lovely, Tampa, Florida. Welcome. Again, drop your name, city, and state in the chat to be recognized here live. The information that we're going to be discussing tonight, this is not taught in any textbook. You know you have to be an accredited investor to get this kind of an account. So what is an accredited investor? That's a person that earns $250,000 or more or have a million dollars net worth in assets. Right. So your broker is not talking to you about an account like this, but you have access to this type of account through Julie Avalana, welcome. Atlanta, welcome. We got Minerva out of St. Paul, welcome. Again, drop your name, city and state in the chat to be recognized here live. We got the Canard, K1, Alabama, welcome. We got Anthony, welcome. We got the Robert out of Cincinnati, Ohio, welcome. We got Miss Cassandra Wooten out of Goldsboro, North Carolina, welcome. We got my kingdom builders in the house. Again, drop your name, city and state in the chat to be recognized here live. We got people chiming in from all over the country. Because this information, I tell you what, we're just not being taught in any schools. And we want to get this message out to the masses to understand 
with what they have in their hands. We want our members to understand the value of what they have in their hands. We got a few more minutes before we get started, and I'm going to bring on our guest speaker because I tell you what, you're not going to want to miss this information, and we're not going to be before you long. So again, drop your name, city, and state in the chat. You take a few more before we get started. Let's see here. We got uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Marvin McGee, welcome, sir. Uh, Linda out of Decatur, Georgia, welcome. We got the Michelle Alex Austin out of Washington D.C. <coughs> welcome. Deborah out of Tallahassee, Florida, welcome. Albert and Regina Turner, Brooklyn, New York, know. welcome. David, mm. welcome. Angela from Wendell, welcome. Jeff Santos out of Las Vegas, welcome. We got Marjorie Battle, welcome. David, Florida in the house, welcome. Marjorie Park, Durham, North Carolina, welcome. Right, just a few more minutes. I think 20. All right, guys. Hey, listen, that is my cue for us to be able to give you who our speaker is for tonight. You've heard from this gentleman before. This gentleman I'm about to bring on his success as well, documented in the industry. He has built teams of tens of thousands of people across this country. The gentleman knows how to build and build big. His experience in the industry and experience has helped propel MWR at home to be the number one ranked full financial makeover company in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to our webinar the President of Leadership and Field Development, Mr. Andamo Tolson. Mr. Tolson, are you there? Y yes. Do you hear me, Daryl? We can hear you, and uh, the screen presentation is up and ready for you, sir. The webinar is oh. yours. Okay, Daryl, for whatever reason, I'm having the circle, so I can't see the screen. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to ad-lib in the best of ways. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I appreciate our, everyone being here from all over the country. It's exciting to see the growth that we're having and the impact that we're having everywhere. Normally we have our experts doing uh, talking to you about the uh, private reserve account and how that's a tax-free vehicle. But tonight, because of one of our experts, they're tied up in a conference that we just found out last minute that we're now we're pivoting. And that's what I love about MWR Financial. And, and we are just like real life or real finances. We sometimes have to pivot. Now, I'm not the expert, but I know a lot about what the private reserve account is and what it does. And I had been offering the account and, and you know, my kids have an account like this set up for them. So I know about this account and what it can do for you. So there's some slides that are there. I don't remember how they all go in the order that they go since it's not coming up on my phone. And because I'm in a car I, I, and going through the mountains of California, that may be why, I, why it's just doing this circle and spinning and not letting me see the slide. So bear with me if I don't match up with the slides are going, but I'll be able to help you have a good understanding. And if Daryl, you or, or Martina – kind of let me know it's on the slide or even read some of the stuff if I miss certain things. But you guys will get a clear, good understanding of what we're talking about here. So I do know that I think one of the very first slides we talk about is the four cornerstones to wealth. And if I remember the cornerstones correctly, uh, one, I know you want to have growth. You want to have, while you have growth, you still want to have safety because you don't want to lose any of your money. You want your money to grow, but you don't want to lose any of your hard-earned money. You want to have security so if something ever happens to you that your money is passed on to your heirs and, and keeping Uncle Sam's, you know, big greedy fingers out of it. And then you also want to have, um, there's something else. I'm going to go four corners. There's one more. Tax what, which one am I missing? Protection. Part, tax, tax, advantages. Free, oh, tax advantages. Yeah, you want to have tax advantages. So that's the part I meant by having Uncle Sam's greedy hands out of it. So you want those are the four cornerstones to wealth. And what we're going to talk to you today about are some of those cornerstones so you can see how and why ultimately the private reserve gives you that. Now, the next slide, I'm not sure. I can't recall what it is, but I know they talk about, you know, what's happened in the past and, and how – there was a time where we all used to work for uh, 40 hours a week for 40 years or 30, 40 years, and then you get you retire uh, uh, and you got a pension. And that pension, when you retired, and I know in, in the 60s, I think you know some 60, 65 percent of people retired with a pension. And you stop. When you got that pension, um, you what what happened is you would literally find out 
that, okay, if I stop working and then the job is going to pay me a certain amount of money every single month for the rest of my life. And in some companies, if they're really good, they would pay, if you passed away, they would pay your spouse for the rest of her life. So that's how pensions were done. You didn't have to worry about your retirement. The job kind of said, if you gave us 40 years of your life, all your creativity, all your effort, all your youth, all of that, then we're going to give you back something. But back in the in the 70s uh, and the 60s and 70s, what happened was pensions, they started going, especially when we got to the 70s and got to the early 80s, they were going, wait a minute, these companies are saying people because of uh, modern technology and medicine, people are living longer. They said, there's no way you're going to be able to we're going to be able to continue to pay these. So under the Reagan administration, they got rid of pensions. And what they did is they came up with this tax code, which was really only meant at the time, it was only done for high-paying executives, called a 401k. And what that tax code did is they just let you shield a little bit more money. And again, it was for high-paying executives to shield a little bit more money. Well, when they said that is going to be the nature of retirement for people, but what you're going to have to do to get people to adopt it and get and not require and request a pension, you are going to have to contribute to help give them an incentive to want to do a 401k. So when you contribute, you have to do it when they put a dollar in, you put a dollar in. And so that's what companies started doing to get people to do that. And some companies, really good companies, I know when I worked at Pacific Bell back in the early 80s, uh, they would pay you, give you $2 for every dollar you put in. So I was excited to get a 401k. And then uh, after a decade or so, what was happening, you would find that you would tell your kids or your, you know, your, your maybe your younger siblings, hey, you want to get a job. When you get a job, make sure you get into the 401k program. The challenge with the 401k is that it was never meant to be a retirement vehicle. So now companies, they've, everyone has kind of fallen in love and, 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 and gotten used to and conditioned to get a 401k to the point that people are literally over, they're overfunding their 401ks. They are, and companies no longer have to give you the incentive where we'll pay you a dollar, we'll match your dollar for every dollar you put in. In fact, some companies, and there's many that don't even match anymore. They don't do a matching at all. They just you put it in. So you should never put in more money than the company is willing to match in a 401k because they weren't meant for you. They weren't designed for you. In fact, there were several articles, one in Time Magazine and several that talked about how the 401k was a financial flop. And unfortunately, I can't read all the what, the what the specifics were said about what was written in Time and what was written in, in Newsweek and what was written by uh, PBS.org, but they all talked about where the 401k was never meant for people. And it was done for a lot of reasons. Number one, you have the volatility in the stock market because it was tied to the growth and, and the ups and downs of the stock market. So number two, you had a situation where they would charge excess fees. Now, under the Obama administration, a lot of things got changed a little bit, so they weren't killing you with fees like that, but they still get you in with a lot of fees, and sometimes it could be in excess of up to 30% in fees were taken away from your wealth if you, that you were trying to have to save for someone. But here's the biggest thing for 401Ks. What they do is they say, we won't charge you taxes now. We'll defer your taxes. So what do you think? about taxes are they going to get higher or are they going to get lower over time all i know is i can look back at what's happened in the past they always seem to get higher they never go lower so what they do is they don't tax you on the seed 401ks tax you on the harvest when you need the money most and what what started happening originally when people started you know cashing in and wanting to get an income or a certain amount of money every month or, or every quarter or whatever from their 401ks they started seeing that the taxes that were coming out and it was extraordinary and they would go whoa whoa wait a minute i don't want to pay this kind of taxes so what they did is they went out and they said we're not going to do that where, where, where people were like i don't want to take that much money out i'm taking a lot less out and that started happening so much that the government because remember when you're you're using their money and they, they defer these taxes, they started to say, we want our money now. So now at 69 and a half, you get a letter 
that says you are required. It's called a minimum distribution requirement, MDR. You get a letter that says you have to take out at least this every month. Doesn't matter. You have to take out at least this out of your 401k because the government wants all their taxes. So that is a challenge when you talk about creating wealth. Okay, so there's, I know there's some slides that are going to tell you, and, and they could probably just move through them and kind of tell you some other things about what the 401k, you know, some of the challenges it has and things like that. Um, what I want to say is when you, get, when you look at, say, a private reserve account, um, a private reserve account is really set up and designed to have multiple purposes for money. So you can put money into an account. It, oh, by the way, before I even go there, I know there's a part where they talk about the different uh, buckets, and there's three different buckets. You can you can take a bucket where you don't where you get taxed now. You can have one that's your tax later, and they talk about the different kind of of accounts, uh, type of financial vehicles you can use on the tax now, like a bank is tax now. You know, and you do uh, you know. Uh, uh, a money market account, savings account, CDs, those kind of things are taxed now. Then the tax later are like 401Ks, 403Bs, you know, those kind of things, teachers, that kind of stuff. IRAs are taxed later, um, uh, Roth IRAs and then ta or, uh, taxed later. And then tax never is like a, 401, uh, a PRA, a private reserve account. Uh, they're taxed never. Uh, because they don't tax you on the on the seed and then 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 wait or they they tax you on the seed but not the harvest. So in other words, you don't get to say, hey, I put ten thousand dollars in my four hundred one k and reduce my taxes by ten. You go in and pay taxes on the ten thousand dollars now, but that way they don't touch the money ever when you when you're ready to retire or have it pay you an income you get this income tax free so it's a beautiful thing um, in fact there are some examples where it shows and unfortunately it's still not letting me see the screen so there are some examples where it shows that someone put in a certain amount of money to as a two brothers they both are 30 years old or 30 say 35 years old and they worked for 30 years and they put in the same amount of money they wanted to have the same amount of money at retirement, I think about $52,000 a year when they retired. So one did it in a 401k, one put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a PRA. The one that did it in a 401k, what happened was when he started taking out money, they're taxing him. So he had to take out, uh, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, but I want to say it was 70 some odd thousand dollars a year to get $52,000 net. And so he, when he, by him doing that every year, he wound up running out of money in 13 years. And that's one of the big uh, fallacies about 401ks. One of the big challenges is that people run out of money because it's like my father in love. When he retired in 2000, I want to say two, around 2002, well, when 2008 happened, 2007, 2008 happened, and the market just tanked, he lost almost half of his, his retirement in one, one year. So what he did was he started going, my goodness, and he had, because of his age and because of everything else, he's like, all I could do is hope that it ever recovers. And I know there's a slide, and we probably already passed it, but it shows you that if you put $10,000 in, the, if you had $100,000, to make my math easy, and you put it in an account and you lost 10%, so now you only have $90,000, the average person, if I ask them what would it take to get back to 100000 they'll tell you it would take. 10% because I lost 10, I just need to get 10 back and I'm there. But in actuality, it takes 11.1% because you're starting at 90, not 100 anymore. So imagine when the stock market drops 38, almost 39%, so let's call it 40, so my math is easy and it rounds off. They, it went from $100,000 to 60. Do you realize it takes a 66.7% return to recover from a 40% loss? That's 66.7%, and watch this, the return just gets you back to even, back to the $100,000 again. You haven't made any money, 
So what you see in a 401k typically is you see the ups and the downs, so you make money, and they have good years, and then sometimes they have down years, and that back and forth, back and forth over time, you're seeing on average about, you know, somewhere between a six and an, about a six, six and a half percent return on your investments. Whereas when you are in a private reserve account, that is where you get to experience some of the gain, but the greatest thing about that account is you never have to experience any of the loss. So this is an account that you have no, they have a no loss provision, so it allows you not to lose money on any, so if the market is down and they lost money, because it's still tied to the, to the stock market, the, the S&P 500, but if they lose money, you don't lose. So zero becomes your hero. So as an example, if let's say you had $100,000, again, making math easy, just so you know, sometimes when I say these kinds of things, you think I have to have $100,000 to start my, my PRA? No. Some people have started with a little bit of 200 bucks, $100. But what happens is a lot of times you can take your, and I'll tell you that in a moment, but let's just say you had $100,000. And using the example that we said, you lost, you lost, uh, you, you, you made, let's say you made, had an 8% gain. I think there's a slide that shows this. You had an 8% gain in the market. So now the value of your account is $108,000. But let's say the very next year, there it came out to an 8% loss. So you would actually drop down to below $100,000. You lost real money uh, because you're losing 8% of $108,000. So you're down around 99, you know, just under, just under, just above 90, 90. $99,000, somewhere in there, but you're not at 100 Well, in the PRA world, you wouldn't have lost anything. You still have your $108,000 value. You would not have lost anything, even though there's a downturn in the market. So, so zero became your hero because you didn't lose any money. Then let's say the next year the market went up by 5%. Well, you would get the 5% increase, and so now the, the value of your 108000 is around 114000 or so. But those that had a drop down to 99000 or so, they're only up about 104000 So you're like about a $10,000 environment ahead of someone that would have just been in the stock market or someone would have had a 401k. And then if you look at that and you now look at that over time, this is why so many people are so much further ahead with a PRA than the 401k method. Now, we're not saying don't get rid of your 401k. If you have a 401k, continue to have it. Maybe you might not want to contribute there anymore. So you keep the 401k, you don't contribute, you take the money from your four, that you were contributing to your 401k. And certainly if you were overfunding it, if you were putting in more than what they're willing to match, then you'd want to stop doing that immediately. And you could take the excess, that excess money and start a PRA account. It's as easy as that. Powerful. And it is a, is a powerful tool to trust me, the experts, which I'm going to make sure they go over the PRA where you can see the slides in, in cohesive nature next week. We'll make sure the experts are on and that happens. But um, so that, I, I want to just tell you that part. I'm trying to think, and it's still in a circle, Martina and Daryl, so I, I still can't see the slides. So I'm going to go um, to what one of the great things about a PRA, and I'm going to give you an idea of what you can use a PRA, the way wealthy people use PRAs and how they make, why they continue to create wealth. So let's say they go to buy a car, and they can do this with a house or anything else, but let's just use a car. And let's say you buy that car, and the car costs you, uh, let's call it $25,000. And so you, so the typical way we buy a car Car costs twenty five thousand. We put down a down payment, and then we have a loan, and we pay back the loan, and then um, we're paying. Let's say we're paying, uh, call it, you know, five hundred bucks a month, and then over time, uh, you know, over say a three year, four year period of time, we might have paid twenty nine, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty thousand dollars for this twenty five thousand dollar car. Five years from now, we put in thirty thousand dollars, and so you're like, ugh. We try to sell it. We 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 realize the car's only worth about fifteen, ten or fifteen. So, but that is what happens. That's how most people buy cars. The way people, wealthy people, do it is they'll use a PRA. They'll pull the money out of their PRA to buy the car. They then pay themselves back, like they're making a car payment. They're paying it back. 
when, as they pay themselves back, here's the beautiful thing about a PRA. When you pull the money out, the PRA, because you have multiple uses with the money, it acts as though you never touch the, the money. So it continues to gain compound interest, even, when, even though that you pull the money out to use it. Then when you're paying yourself back, let's say you fi finally pay yourself back after, let's call it three or four years, whatever it is, and then you might have, instead of paying interest, you know, all that interest that you paid on the car, and the car is not even worth what you paid for it now, now you bought the car for 25000 and here's the greatest thing. I know there's a slide that shows you in the stock market in the early 2000s, you know, you, you had a lot of downs, and maybe a little gain, but a lot of downs, and even in that environment, you still might have made about $3,000 in your PRA. So when you subtract the $3,000, say, from the 28000 and, you know, 29000 you paid for it with, with, with uh, taxes, that at least lets you pay, say, okay, the car's worth twenty five now, and that's what it is. But that's in a down market. If you go look at, I think, like 2000, um, like four or five to 2000, or like 2003 to 2007, something like that, where the market was really flying and really hot, hot kind of like it is now or like it has been, what happens is the PRA would might have gained you, and I think the example that it has there is somewhere around fifteen thousand dollars. So here you buy a car for twenty five thousand, the PRA gained you fifteen thousand while you had the money out, but you paid yourself back. Now the car really only cost you ten thousand dollars, and isn't that about what the car is worth now? <laughs> when you're when, you, when you're trying to sell it, uh, you know, because that's all it's worth. See, that is the smart way to to handle your your finances and allow your your investment vehicle, like allow your I shouldn't say investment, but allow your PRA to grow for you and do things for you, even when you use the money for something else. That's one of the big powers of the PRAs, and you can set up your PRA. In fact, I think there's a there's there's an example there where we have Antonio. And, you know, Antonio is, if I remember correctly, he's 30 years old, has a, has a young daughter, and then at about, he started contributing to his 401k, I believe he's putting like $500 a month away, and then when his daughter was uh, time for high school, like 15 years later, it's time for college, he wanted to take out $20,000 a year to pay for her school. That's a normal thing. People would need to do that. I've had three kids, two have finished, and one is in his junior year of college, and that really, that's a real life example. That really happens. So now what Antonio was able to do was pull the money out of his PRA, pay for college for those four years, but while he was paying for college, the PRA continued to grow as though he never even touched that $80,000 to pay for his daughter's schooling. So when he retires at 65, here's the, here's the crazy thing. He looks and they go, in his PRA contributions for those 30 years or 35 years, he put in like $240,000 into his PRA. But what he was able to take out was like $1.5 or something, and he, or $1.8 and he was able to leave like a $1.5 to his family. You say, wait a minute, that doesn't, that's crazy math. How did that happen? Remember, if you understand the compound interest, the rule of 72, where whatever you, if you ever wanted to know, this will help you for the rest of your life, so you guys can write this down. If you ever want to know what kind of, how fast your money will double, then you take 72 and you divide it by the, whatever your rate of return is. So if, for example, if you get a 4% a, a, a rate of return, money doubles every 18 years, because 18, if you go 18 times 4, that'll e equal 72. If you kind of do it that way, or if you divide four by eight by seventy-two, it'll be eighteen. So I'll tell you, it takes eighteen years to double. Just like if you got an eight percent return, your money's doubling every nine years. If you got a six percent return or twelve percent return, your money's doubling every six years. So that's why someone could put a, a ten thousand dollars in an account, never touch it, and if they were getting a four percent return by the time they turned sixty-five that $10,000 would have grown to $40,000. But when you ask the average person, what happens if you get an 8% return, most of us know the basic math. They go, oh, yeah, it'll, it'll double. You'll go from 40000 to 80000 But in actuality, you go from 
that same 10000 at 29, but by the time you're 65, your account would have grown to $160,000 because money at 8% doubles every nine years as opposed to every 18 years. So you got an extra double, and those doubles are, are, are beautiful things. And so that's why you have Albert Einstein says compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And those that understand compound interest, they earn it, but those that don't pay it. And at MWR Financial, we're making sure you have experts that surround you. So even if you might not fundamentally understand it, you're able to experience the results of it by just plugging into the experts and letting them uh, consult you and letting them direct you on what you should do or should not do. So that is, and I know the slides, I'm sure Martina and, and Daryl are trying to put them in some sort of fashion, and I know I'm driving them crazy because I don't remember exactly how they go per totally, but one slide I want you to see because to me this slide is everything, and Martina, this is towards the end of the presentation. Uh, well, I, I talked to you about Antonio. Well, yeah, I did kind of tell you he had all that money, and the reason why he had made a, he was able to take $1.8 million out because he lived for another 35 years after he retired at 65. He lived to 100. You say 100? How did he live to 100? He had no stress. There was no money issues with him. And you can live a long time when you take money issues and stress out of your life. That's why he lives a good, lo good long life. But here's what I will tell you. And, and Martina or, and, and Daryl, if you could put the slide up that shows, and I won't be able to go down perfectly, but let them see the kind of, um, the kind of, ex uh, kind of tools, kind of things they can invest in right now for retirement, different things. It'll, it'll show the bank, it'll show, you know, annuities, it'll show, you know, different kinds of uh, insurance products, all kinds of things there. But if you show that, and what it does is it'll tell you if, what, it, I, what I love about this part of the slide, it'll tell you if it has, if it has those four cornerstones. So if it will have um, growth, if it will have uh, safety, protection, and I'm missing one. I keep missing one. Daryl told me last time, but I think it's tax uh, it's tax, tax advantage. advantage. Thank you. That's the biggest reason why we're on the phone tonight to talk about tax free. So it's the tax advantage. So Daryl, do you know the slide I'm referring to, where you can just click on there and let people see that where the X's come up, where the green check marks, so they can yeah. see what we it has it for their own eyes. Yeah, we have it up. If you. Okay, great. If you and I get because I can't see it, nothing's come up on my phone. So uh, if you can, uh, you can either if one of you want to even say what they, what you're looking at, so you can click on them, and all you have to do is click, and you'll be able to see how what has if it has an X, that means it has that. It does not have that. If that's a check mark, it means it does have one of those four areas of the four cornerstones to wealth. Can you do yes, that? Yes, we one? have them all up. We have we have them all up. The stock. Stock mutual fund, uh, a green check right. for the growth. However, it is lacking in three of the other cornerstones. The 401k, the 403b, the 457 is again in the growth, but it is lacking in the other three. The Roth, R, the Roth IRA is um, actually positive in both the growth and the tax advantages, but it is lacking in the safety and the protection columns. So each one of these you see has a benefit, but it also has, you know, a lack. However, the private reserve account is uh, positive in all four cornerstones. And that is the whole point to everything. And thank you, Martina, for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know you heard from me not looking at anything in a car on the way through mountains. So, luckily, I hope you – I didn't lose you guys at any point. But um, this was a ru very rudimentary a way to talk about the PRA. Next week, I promise you, the experts will be on. They will do a recap and make and, and do it right so you really get to see the power of the PRA. But I will tell you this. Private reserve accounts are a tremendous way. Here's what I will tell you. Only they've been around for some 30-plus years, and only 6% of people in America have that account. 6%, that's it. But here's the unique part of that. 94%. Of those that have a PRA account, make $200,000 a year or more. So once again, you see that the rich and wealthy are doing things differently than the working and middle class do. So you can schedule your consultation with the PRA, with one of the experts, and they can talk to you about 
what your situation is, and is the PRA the right vehicle, or is it another tax-free vehicle or another type of uh, financial product that will allow your money to start to grow for you, because that's what we're looking to do at MWR Financial. All of our services, from tax reduction to debt, uh, uh, to debt elimination to bill negotiation, that's, uh, that's even credit restoration. They're all designed to help you save money and then, and then create cash flow. So that way, out of the cash flow, you can now take that cash flow and put it into a vehicle that's going to grow for you so your money can grow while you are, while you are, are building uh, the portfolio that you want. And over time, and we can show you everyone, and the, and the experts can show you how to have a million dollars under your rocking chair when it's all said and done for you. But what I love about MWR Financial is that we have the ability to build a distribution network. And through that, through the examples of people's lives being impacted and seeing financial makeovers happen, you have the ability to accelerate every single financial goal you've ever had. And we've had people now that have, that have purchased vehicles, paid them off way earlier than they ever thought before. That we have, I remember Mr. Charles Ivory bought an acre and a half of, of, of lakefront property, and he was able to pay that off. It was supposed to be uh, 84 months at four and three quarter percent interest, if I remember, and he was able to pay it off in 10 months because he built it. He was making money. So we save and grow your money. That's what that's what the MWR membership does, and then the MWR at home opportunity lets you make money. So save, make, and grow. That's what it's all about, uh, Martina. I'm sure people have questions and things like that, but next week they will be done. Uh, just right because the experts will do this call as perfect as it generally is. I apologize for driving you, Martina, and you, Daryl, crazy with trying to figure out which slide I'm going to go to next. <laughs> so I apologize to everyone from all over the country who uh, plugged in to hear from the experts. But I hope I help you, helped you get a basic understanding of, you know what, I need to at least schedule a consultation with the, with the experts to find out if a PRA is something that would work for me and my family. So with that, I'm going to turn the call back over to you, Daryl. Thank you and Martina, not only for all that you do, but for really uh, helping us look good when we, when we put these kinds of lives together. Uh, you guys do an amazing, amazing job, and we really appreciate the uh, first class you know, team effort that you always demonstrate. So we thank you, and I'm turning the call back over to you. Well, Mr. Tosa, I want to thank you so much for that. And I tell you what, this is why we say what we do is real. There's no fluff here. We don't make anything up. We were able to do this presentation for you the best possible, and the information be delivered. We got a lot of comments in there that were congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, we did a great job, so we want to thank everyone for your assistance and, and, and being with us on this on this journey. But that being said, be sure that you're registered for the event coming up April 23rd, 24th, the 2022 year of transformation event, where we're going to hear a lot more of our new services that we're going to be introducing. And be keep in mind, at this time, while we still have our $99 cash flow credit, expose, 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 and let's get our folks grandfather into our program so that way they can continue to take advantage of what we're going to have coming and what we have on the table now. And be sure to see us next Thursday where we're going to be back on our platform of the Financial Edge University live webinar, 830. Thank you so much. And I'm going to take the Daryl, oh. and let me just say this real quick. I just so everyone knows why I'm not in position, because I don't want you to say, hey, because normally I could be in position and see the slides and I'd do it and we'd have no challenge. But my daughter, today, it's St. Patrick's Day, but today is her birthday, and it's her 25th birthday, and la the last couple of years, we were not able to celebrate with her because she was in Madrid, Spain. And so now she's back, you know, here in California, so I'm actually headed to go celebrate for her because we have to do it early because she's teacher and she's going to wrap up early but I'm trying to get to her uh, to do that and so that's why I was out of position and not expecting 
to need for it to be needed today. So I again apologize to everyone for that, but I appreciate everyone's understanding. And uh, I, I, if you all just say a, a big happy birthday to my daughter, I appreciate that. So that's Absolutely. what we're going to go do. I'm on my way to tell her happy birthday. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go ahead Thanks, and um, meet the line. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks. Have a great night.